time student we continue our lesson so today i want to continue the last one for the chapter light that's a lesson 6.6 uh, image formation by the spherical mirrors okay let me go through okay so the first one there are two types of the mirror Okay, we need to introduce the two types of the mirror that's uh, not related with the plane mirror because we learned already the plane mirror. So from here, we need to introduce there's a two curve of the mirror. So first one, that's called concave mirror. So from here, you can see about the shape of the concave mirror. So this one is a surface uh, that reflects light. Okay, now we go to second one. The second one... The surface also reflects the light, but you can see the shape. There's a reverse with the concave. This one we call it as a convex mirror. Okay, then we go to detail. Okay, this one is an example. How to find out uh, what's the different image formed by the concave and also convex surface. So this one is an example concave surface and convex the surface of the steel spoon that act as a convex mirror and also the concave mirror so this one you can try after that you can find what happened for the image so from the concave surface you can find it your image is a reverse okay you can call it as an inverted okay another one is a convex you can find it your image still the same upright but the size become more focused Okay, this one become thinner or you say the image becomes smaller. So from here, the question is, uh, what is the characteristic of the image formed by the concave surface and also the convex surface of the spoon? So from this one topic, we need to learn uh, as the image they from from the convex or concave mirror, we need to find out what is the characteristic. When you just find out, you need to prove. So that means you need to draw the ray diagram to show your image. After that, we mention the characteristic. Okay, let me go through. Okay, from here, we need to find out the field of the vision of the observer in front of the three types of the mirror. So the first one must be the plane mirror, then followed by the concave mirror, and also the convex mirror of the same size. Okay, now we see which one should be benefit. Okay, so this one is the first one from the plane mirror. So from the plane mirror, we find it, we can see just a narrow field of the vision. So the anchor should be the fixed one. That means the wider area you cannot see. Okay, now we try using the concave mirror. Concave mirror, you find out there's still very narrow field of the vision compared to the plane mirror but one of the advantages uh, they can focus focus the image so maybe you can see the image become very large okay because the other area they cannot focus they just can focus uh, near uh, image so finally you can find the image become very large and also clear and the last one there's a convex mirror Okay, convex mirror that can view wider field of the vision. So the bigger area you can see, but the uh, disadvantage is the image is very small. Okay, so this one is the differences from the three types of the mirror. Okay, as they produce the image with the different characteristic. Okay, now we need to learn is the two spherical mirror. First one should be the concave, another one should be the convex. Okay, now we need to find out the ray diagram. When the light just passed, after that they will refract it. How they go to refract it? Okay, let's see the first one. So this one is a concave mirror. So all the light that are parallel. Okay, parallel means distant object. So when they just parallel, they will refract it. Okay, refract it go where? They will go to focal point. So the capital F, we call it as a focal point. So that means all the light, they will converging to one of the point. So from here, you can find the image that's very large because they focus to one point only. 
Okay, now we can find out this whole line we call principal axis. The join with the P, join with the F, and join with the C. Okay, after that we got small f. The small f we call it as a focal length. The distance between the center of the mirror to the f. Okay, another one is from the center of the mirror, then you go until the C. So this one we call it as a radius. Okay, then we go to find out the convex mirror. Okay, the convex mirror also same. All the parallel light they go. After that, they will refract it. Okay, from the F. This one is refracted to the F. This one is from the F. After go to F, they will diverge. So you find out the arrow they go to wider area. Okay, so this one is a convex mirror characteristic. They can see the wider area, but the image sure is not clear because you already spread out. Okay, so from here, we also got the same principal axis. We got P, F, and also the C. Okay, the small f called focal length. Distance between center of the mirror go to the F. Okay, then this one is a R. From the P, go to C. So this one, we call it as a radius. Okay, now we go and find out the refraction of the light on the curved mirror. Okay, this one is an example. Just now I show you. So this one should be the experiment they go to try. Okay, from the ray box, the light to come out. After that, this one is a concave mirror. Okay, you find it. Then we focus to one point. After refracted from the concave mirror. So this point we call it as a focal point. Okay, another example. This one is a convex mirror. So when the parallel light ray go through, after that they will refract it. Okay, the behind F we cannot see because the mirror already blocked it. So we find it the light ray, they will refract it, go to wider area. So this one is a proof from the experiment. Okay, now we need to learn uh, the label for the mirror. So that means later we just mention about the symbol only. Okay, first one is the pole of the mirror. That's a P. That's the center point of the curved mirror. Okay, after that we got C. C we call it center of curvature. That's a geometry center of the horosphere of which is a concave or you say the convex mirror is a part. Okay, after that we got P, F and also C. The whole straight center line. This line, they call it principal axis. So they pass through the center curvature after that pole of the curved mirror. Okay, this one is a three part, PC and also the whole PCF. Okay, then we still got another one. That's a principal focus. That's a capital P. So that's a point through which all the red traveling the parallel to the principal axis convert to or you can say to appear to divert from the refraction of the mirror. So that means focal point is all the light ray when it just parallel go, they must refract it go there. Okay, then we go to radius. Okay, radius is a distance between the P and also the C. So this one we call radius. And the last one is a small f, that's a focal light. Focal length is a distance between the principal focus and also the pole of curved mirror. So normally they will ask should be the focal length. They will ask what means of focal length. So you understood there's a distance between the focal point to the P. So that one is a focal length. Okay, and two more we need to know because later you need to draw. One we call object distance. There's a U. Okay, small U. Sorry, this one not about the initial velocity. Okay, the light topic is not related with the before that topic. That's an in independence. Okay, so from here, this one we call object distance. So object distance, what means? There's a distance between the object and also the P. Okay, center of the mirror. Okay, image distance we also label as a small v. Okay, there's an image between the distance and also the mirror. So remember mirror is a center. 
So that means you want to count the object. Object sure is another side. So another one image should be another side. So ob uh, the center mirror there will separate object and also the image. Okay, now we need to know the ray first before we start to draw. Okay, so from here, we got ray diagram for the concave and also convex mirror. So this one we label as the first ray. Okay, so later we just combine the ray, then we get the image. One ray, actually, you cannot get anything. So at least you got two. Two after that, you cross. That means you know the point should be the image. So I want to introduce the first ray. Okay, first ray, we draw from the concave mirror. There must be parallel. Okay, remember, we draw the straight line. We're doing using the curved one. Ah. The curved one is very small. So we make it at the longer straight line. So this one is a concave mirror. So this one is a first ray parallel. Parallel means from the distant object. So just now I told you, parallel after the heat to the mirror, they must refract it go where? They must go to the focal point. So this one we call the full first ray. Parallel, heat the mirror, then refract it to the F. So this one is the first ray. Okay, now we're going to see the convex mirror, how to draw the first ray. Okay, the first ray also same, parallel. But remember, they are refracted from the F. This one is to the F. Now it's from the F. So that means you must draw the continuous line, go to F first. Okay, after that, from the F, you go to diverging. Diverging means you make it the arrow become wider area. So you continue the blue line, go straight. So this one should be diverging line. So you find that this one should be the first ray from the convex mirror. Okay, this one is an example for the experiment. They from the parallel light, hit the concave mirror. After that, they will refract it to the focal point. Okay, then we go to next. There's a second ray. Okay, second ray from the concave mirror. There's a reverse from the first ray. First ray is parallel first, is it? So this one we go to F first. They exactly reverse the step. So we go to the F. After that, hit the mirror. They must refract it, is it? Refracted parallel. So this one we call it second ray. Okay, for the convex mirror. Okay, now we're going to see. They go to the F first. Okay, they're using the behind F. After that, from the mirror. Okay, they draw parallel. So this one is a second ray for the convex mirror. Okay, then we continue to see the real experiment. They show the ray diagram. So from here, you see the ray from the ray box. They go to the F. After heat to the convex mirror. Okay, after that, they will go parallel. Okay, so this one is an example for the ray diagram for the concave mirror. Okay, now we go to third ray. Third ray is the most simple one because they just got one line only. Okay, they will pass to the C. Pass to the C, hit to the mirror and go back. So that means you can find it, they got two arrows. That means they go and back at the same direction. Okay, for the convex, also the same. Okay, the heat go to the behind C and come back also same line. So this one is an example for the third ray. So normally we combine is using the first ray and also the third ray because they're more easy to memorize. Okay, now we go through. Okay, this one is an example for the experiment. They show how to get the third ray. Straightforward, go to C. You see, don't have anything refracted. They straightforward, go C and come back. So that means they just got one line. Okay, array, they're passing through the C, refracted back along the same path. Okay, so from here, I want to introduce the location before you start to draw. Okay, now, these two parts, okay, we label this one is one, two, three, and four. 
So part 1 and part 3 are labelled L, means they're using for lenses. Okay, so today we learn about the mirror. So part 1 and part 3, we don't touch anything. Okay, so we need to touch is a part 2 and part 4. Okay, so later you draw your image either appear at the part 2 or appear at the part 4 because there's a related for the mirror characteristic. Okay, another one. Okay, we need to see the horizontal line. Okay, horizontal line we separate by above and also below. Okay, above the horizontal line means you get the image is a virtual image. Virtual image means they cannot capture on the screen. Okay, example for your mirror is something to block the mirror that means you cannot see. So that one we call virtual image. If the bottom, you get the image means your image is a real image. Okay, so this one is a, a related to guide you later you get the image how to create the characteristic okay so we continue to the next part okay so from here a label for you above we call virtual below we call it as a real image okay so from here we need to start to draw the concave mirror we're using concave first so we separate by the different location of the object so i label for you okay v and r okay this one is a virtual because there's a above the horizontal line below is a real so we're just using part two and part four so first part i label for you i need to using the object distance less than f okay this one is a f is it so your object is here so from the o to p we call it object distance from the F go to P, we call focal length. Okay, so from here, we're just using first ray and third ray to draw. After that, we get the image. Okay, first ray. Okay, after that, must refractor go to find F. So this one we call first ray. Okay, now we continue with third ray. Third ray just got one straight line, go to C. Okay, so from here, you can find it for this part. Part 4, you cannot get the image because there's a keep of a bigger and bigger size. They cannot join. So what we can do, we need to extend the line until to part 2. So we continue. Okay, when you draw the part 2, you must using the dotted line because there's a above the horizontal. There's a virtual. So we continue. Then continue again for the second one. So until you can join. Okay, you can overlap. So that means this point is an image point. So I sure already the image is happened at the part 2. So part 2, so I need to draw the image. Okay, image how to draw? We always start from the horizontal. So we start from horizontal, we draw up. Okay, so don't draw down because horizontal is at the bottom. So we must start from the bottom. So this one is an object. Your image must be same look. Okay, you don't tell me this one object is up, then you are the ballet. So from here, we need to draw from the horizontal up. Okay, now I draw the image. So this one is the image you get from this situation when the object less than the F. Okay, now you can see the dotted line. I'm using dotted line because this part is a virtual part. Okay, we need to state the characteristic. Okay, first one, we know there's a virtual. Is it because there's a above the horizontal line? Okay, number two, can you see both also is an upright? Okay, they never inverted. There's the same upright. The head at the top, this one head also at the top. Okay, number three, we compare the size. The size become bigger. So bigger, we call it as a magnifying. Okay, now we state the characteristic. Virtual, upright, magnified. So normally the virtual and upright should be the partner. Lah. So when you find there's a virtual, another one should be the upright. Okay, magnify, we just compare. So this one is a first situation when the object less than F. Okay, for the second one, I want to move my object distance. 
So from here, manipulate variable is an object distance. So I want to move the object, go to the F exactly on the f you see what happened okay so from here still the same we're using first and third ray but here your object is exactly on the f okay so from here we start first ray okay after that third ray okay from here you can find it part four we cannot join okay we go and try part two, we can join or not. Suppose we also cannot join because both is a parallel. Okay, so from this one situation, we need to add one of the characteristic. Okay, parallel means what? Parallel means the object or you say the image that's located very far. So that's why we get parallel. So from here, we count the image is located at the part two, but very far. So we can give the characteristic virtual because part two is already above the horizontal line. Okay, number two is very far. The object is very far means very large. We cannot focus. So that one is a sure magnified. Okay, then after that, I told you virtual must together with the partner. That's an upright. Okay, this one, you need to add one more characteristic. Very far means infinity. Okay, the image focus at infinity. So we let to see the image characteristic. Virtual, upright, magnify, add one more. There's an infinity. Okay, I continue again to adjust the object distance. Now it's between F and also the C. Okay, from here again 2 and 4 using first ray and third ray so i can confirm to tell you when the object just move after the f you cannot get virtual image ready that means your image cannot happen at the part two that sure will happen at the part four okay so this one is a tips for you when you just never draw we also know the characteristic okay now we go to prove it first ray after that continue go to f Okay, now I'm using third ray. Third ray means go to C. Okay, so you can find it. I can join in the part four. Okay, part two, sure, you cannot join because it keep wider. So from here, I get it. They cross at this part. So I need to draw my image. So your image must draw start from the horizontal line. So when you start from the horizontal line, means you straight forward, go downwards. Okay, because you cross at the bottom. So I start to draw. So below the horizontal line, there's a real image. Real image, no need to using dotted line. Just using the full line. So I draw it. Okay, so this one is my image. So now I need to state out the characteristic. Okay, characteristic below the horizontal line means there's a real. Okay, now I compare the object and the image. Is it reverse? Okay, so we never call it as a reverse. We call it as an inverse. Okay, that's a tabale, so we call it inverted. Okay, after that, we compare the size. So the size should be become bigger. Okay, compared to the object. So from here, we can write the characteristic. Okay, that's a real, inverted, and magnified. So one more tips for you. The real partner must be inverted. Just now, it's a virtual together with the upright. Okay. So we continue to move again my object. I want to move, go to the C. Okay, we see what happened again. Eh? Okay, now the object already moved until C. Okay, when the object just moved until C, mean this one situation, we cannot use third ray. Okay, how you draw the third ray? Because third ray already is a one straight line. So we just ignore the third ray. We're using one and two. Okay, we see what happened. So I told you just now, the object, when it just after the F, we no more virtual. There must be real. So that means later your image must located at the part 4. Okay, now we draw first ray. Then go to continue F. Okay, second ray. Second ray is go to F first. Okay, after that parallel. So you can find when it just cross, 
that's exactly below the C. Okay, exactly below the C. So I need to draw the image. The image must start from the horizontal line. I draw downwards. So from here, I get it. My image is exactly below the C. That means they're below the object lah, exactly. So from here, the size should be the same size. Okay, so remember this situation when the U equal to F or you say when the U equal C, the image and object is the same size. So this one is a one of the special. So we're using number one and number two ray. Third ray cannot use. So characteristic real inverted. Real together with inverted. So here we don't have any magnify. We also don't have any uh, smaller. The actual answer is the same size. Okay, next one, we continue to move. Continue to move your object, go further some more. Means after the C. We see what happened for the image. Okay, now the object already moved after C. So after C, that means we can using third ray already. Okay, again first, okay, after that go to F. Third ray straightforward go to C. Okay, they can cross ready. They cross at the part 4. Okay, now we need to draw the image. The image sure is a real because below the horizontal line. So this one is the image. Okay, now we need to write the characteristic. So from below the line means there's a real image. Real partner must be inverted. Okay, we compare the size. Is it the sign become smaller? So become smaller, we call it as a diminish. So real, inverted, and diminish. Okay, so this one is a all characteristic related with the location of the object when you just move the object. So from here, remember after the F already is a real inverted. Before the F, sure is a virtual upright. Okay, then the size. Okay, how to memorize the size? We're going to see the conclusion. Okay, this one is a one of the conclusion for the position of the object let you to know the situation. Okay, this one just for using the concave only. Eh? Convex still not yet. Okay, concave mirror. Okay, when your object just located before F. Okay, the sure virtual upright. Okay, then sure magnify. Okay, but when your object located exactly the F, they're still virtual, they're still upright, they're still magnified, but you need to add one more thing. The one we call infinity. Uh, that one is a special. Okay, now I adjust my object further again. When I just after the F, okay, now you see the characteristic. No more virtual, no more upright, they become real and inverted but the size still magnify okay now i move again my object exactly the c exactly the c means you get it as a real inverted and one more special that's the same size so c and f we got special characteristic so at the c there's exactly same size so i move my object again further so until this part, so they're still real inverted, but they will diminish. So you can find out the image will keep smaller and smaller when the object go further and further. So this one is a relationship object distance and also the image size. Okay, so this one is an image that formed by the concave mirror. You can find there's a inverted. Okay, you can find out there's a upright. So this one is a upright. Normally you find it the bigger size. Okay, this one exactly the same size. So you can know this one u equal to f. This one is a u less than the f. So that's why they can find it magnify. Okay, for this one situation you also can say there's a magnify. The the situation is u between f and two f. Okay, we find out the situation because they still magnify. Okay, now I need to introduce is a convex mirror. 
okay we're still using the first ray second ray and third ray but normally we're using first and third lah because more easier to memorize so we go through the first ray okay then remember this one is not go to this f they must go to behind f okay they are divert from the f so this one is a convex mirror so we draw by using the virtual line that's a dotted okay so this one is from the f they go to divert so this one we call first ray okay third ray is the same straightforward go to find the c okay remember behind here this part is a part two please using the virtual line there's a dotted okay so from here okay normally so it should be the dotted line you go to correction so from here where they cross they cross here okay when they cross here this is a part two is it so sure it's a virtual because above the horizontal line okay i draw the image first so this one is an image so first one you know there's a, a virtual virtual partner must be upright okay after that we compare the size they become smaller is it so should be diminished so we go to right this one image characteristic there's an upright virtual and also smaller we also can say there's a diminished okay where we use it this one is an example we're using the convex mirror at the center of the shopping center okay normally they put at the top because they want to view the wider area but the image is very small so this one is the image they form by the convex mirror okay next just now your object is go further is it now i adjust the object is go closer we see what happened okay I'm using first and third first ray then using dotted line go to f okay after that make it longer okay then after that i'm using third ray go to 2f 2f means there's a c here yeah? okay go to c okay you can find it they cross ready but they cross still in the part two is it so i can tell you the convex mirror where your location for your object i don't care where you move finally your image must located at the part two okay and also they must between the p and also f they cannot go other way already so from here i need to draw my image Okay, this one is my image. I'm using dotted line because this part is a virtual. So, characteristic sure is a virtual, upright, diminished. So, characteristic for the convex, we just got one. So, you don't need to memorize so many things. Just the object where they just go. Then you find your image. Sure is a virtual, upright, diminished. So, the convex mirror when you just use, you can see the image is very, very small. But the area is a wider. Okay, now we're going to see some application for the concave mirror in a daily life. Okay, first one is a cosmetic mirror. Okay, let's see the cosmetic mirror. Normally, you want to focus. You want to see your face, is it? So, we're using the concave mirror. So, from here, they say the concave mirror they use for the cosmetic mirror to produce a magnified image for applying the makeup. Okay, example, you go to spec shot, also same. The mirror, they want to focus your face, is it? When you wear the spec. So that one also is a concave mirror. They cannot view wider area, but they can focus to one point. Okay, dental mirror also same. Okay, they want to focus the teeth. So from here, they say the dental mirror, they form an upright. Important, you want to see upright. Don't tell me you want to see the teeth is a reverse or you say inverted. They want to see upright and also magnify the image to examine the teeth. okay and the third one should be the refractor in the car headlight okay this one is an example so the parabolic or the concave mirror is used as a refractor in the car headlight to maintain the light intensity even at the distance so make sure they do not absorb the light they will still refract it after that go up the light intensity must be always the same Okay, after that, we need to see the application for the convex mirror in the daily life. Okay, first one is a blind spot mirror. This one, I think everyone also can see it. Okay, at the roadside. So, this one is a blind spot mirror. Okay, the function is to place at the sharp corner. 
Okay, because sharp corner, sometimes you cannot see the car is coming. So from here, they can widen the field of the vision of the driver. So using the mirror to see another side, is it got any car to come or not? Okay, another one is a security mirror in the building. Just now I show you. Okay, the convex mirror they are used in the building or you say the shopping center for the surveillance purposes. Okay, they want to see anybody at the corner what they're doing. So this one is uh, uh, using the convex mirror in the daily life. And the last one, there's a vehicle rear mirror. Can you can see the front mirror? So there's a one of the mirror they're using the convex mirror. Okay, the vehicle rear mirror they provide a wide field because you want to see the left or right or any car want to cross you or not. So they produce a wide field of the vision that enable the driver to see the vehicle is coming from behind. So they're using the convex mirror. Side mirror sometimes they also use it. The extra want to add one the convex mirror. They want to see any car they want to cross this or say the closer with your car or not. So this one is an application for the convex mirror. So from here, 6.6 .6 should be finished. They're just talking about the mirror and also make sure you know how to draw the ray diagram and also the characteristic. So the next one should be the tutorial. So hopefully you go to practice your tutorial first. The next lesson, I will discuss the question for tutorial. Just thank you for your watching. Thank you.